Danny Hopkins and I'm here at Brick Park in Shropshire with Managing Director Paul Myers. Hello Paul. Hello. Here we have an electric park brake module which is obviously broken. There's another video in this series which shows you how to replace that module as a single unit but Brick Park have just come up with a clever solution which means you don't have to do that, haven't they Paul? Correct, yes. On the uh, Discovery 3, 4 and Ranger of Sport, mm -hmm. the uh, normal failure mode on these is that these plastic gears strip uh, when the cable sees. Instead of replacing the whole module, um, we've come up with a kit of the gears and the hardware so that you can just replace the, the broken components. Brilliant. Okay, well, let's go over to the workshop and uh, see what Martin can make of this and uh, how he can do it himself. Okay, let's have a look at the bits you get in this rebuild kit. First of all, a set of gears, which are the main failure points in the park brake module. You also get two rubber mounting bushes, which almost always break when you remove the module from the car. And finally, a new set of torque screws because the originals are probably going to be rusty and they might round out. So, this is the module as you will have removed it from the Discovery. The first thing to do is to lay it down and undo the original screws that hold the front plate on. And for that you need a T20 Torx. As I said before, it's likely that the screws are going to be quite rusty because this module spent its whole life underneath the Discovery getting blasted with mud and salt and all sorts. So if they need it, just clear the heads out, wire brush any debris out so that the T20 bit goes all the way in. Once you've got all the screws undone, it might take a bit of effort to just prise this front plate off because it's off, stuck on with a lot of silicon sealant to stop water getting inside the module. So with that out of the way, we can see the inner workings. The first thing we need to do is release the cables. So they've got these big plastic knurled nut things on the side. If you undo each of those, they normally come undone by hand. One cable's held in with a quick release clip and the other one we need to unthread because it's threaded into the end of the pull. So if we start by undoing these, just move each cable to each side. So the first one we're going to release is the threaded one. So if we ease the cable outer off the inner, we can then twist this adjuster here and thread the cable out of the mechanism. When we refit this cable, we need to make sure it goes back into the mechanism exactly five turns. It's also a left-handed thread, so you need to turn it clockwise to release it. So that's that cable released. You can pop that aside. Move to the next one. To release this cable, we need to slide the mechanism over, and there's a little plastic collet that holds the cable to the end of the mechanism. So we just use a little pick to depress the clip. So just use a pick to depress the clip. This collet will slide back off there and the cable will be released. Like so. So now we can put this cable aside as well. Next up, we need to disconnect the circuit board and the two terminals on the motor so that we can then access the gearbox. So, note which colour cable goes to which terminal on the motor. So there's a red and a blue. So once the motor's disconnected, just need to undo this single blue connector on the circuit board. Again, just slides out under a little bit of pressure. Tuck that aside. So with the circuit board disconnected, just need to release these three torque screws and then the gearbox will come out of the casing. Okay, three screws are out. So now the motor and gearbox assembly will lift out along with the cable pull. So just once that's released, slide the gearbox complete with the motor off the end of the pull and leave that inside the casing. Retrieve the two screws. And now we can take this apart and replace the gears. So the gearbox is held together 
with more torque screws, four in total. So just take our driver again, release them. Next, the two halves of the gearbox can be separated. Like so, just pulls apart and we can see the gears inside. The motor can stay attached to this side of the plate so we can place that aside. And now we've just got to replace the three plastic gears. So start with this one, slides off its shaft like so. And this has got a clutch mechanism built in which we need to transfer over to the new gears. So we'll do that one last. Next is this other small gear, bring that one out, place that aside, and last, this larger gear, which sits inside a big bearing on the inside of the housing. So obviously if you've had failure of the original gears, you'll need to look inside this case and make sure you clear out all of the debris, any broken gear teeth that are floating around in there and also reapply a bit of grease before you build the new gears into the casing. So when you do go to build the new gears in, the first one you're gonna fit is this large one, which is an interference fit in the big bearing in the back of the housing. So push that one in. And it's an idea to have a look at this side to make sure it's going into the bearing squarely. That will just push all the way home, make sure when it's in place that it turns smoothly like so. The next one to fit is this gear, this, the next small gear, no it's not, it's this one. The next gear to fit is this small gear. This just sits into place in this corner and you'll notice that the pin that that gear spins on stays on this half of the gearbox housing. So it will just float around until you go to refit this plate. Finally, Okay, so the final gear has this slipper clutch mechanism built in, which comprises a spring, a washer, and an E-clip. And we need to swap those items over to the new gear before we fit that to the case. Now, you can take your bag that your parts came in, lay that over the top of the gear, and then use a screwdriver to pop the E-clip off. Because if you don't do that, there's a real possibility when you release it, parts will go everywhere and you'll never find them ever again. So with that released, we can remove the E-clip, the washer and the spring, get rid of that old gear, get the new gear and then it's just obviously a case of stacking them back on this gear in the opposite direction they came off. So when you build up the new gear, the spring goes on first and then the washer and you need to compress that spring while you get the e-clip in place. So push it down by hand, get the e-clip, push it into its ridge on the gear and then you need a pair of pliers just to clip that into place. It's a bit fiddly, but there we go. You hear the E-clip clip into place. Make sure it's properly home. And now that gear is ready to go back into the gearbox. The gear goes into the gearbox with the slipper clutch end pointing downwards. So take that last gear, push it into its pin all the way down. Make sure it turns nicely. And now we can refit the gearbox end cover. Again, this pin has to pass through the second gear that we fitted to the gearbox, so it can be a bit fiddly to line up. So just take the gearbox cover like that, give it a bit of a wiggle, make sure everything aligns, and it should slide into place like that. And the edges of the casing should sit flush if everything's in the right place. And then it's just a case of Putting the four screws back in to fix it all together.
And that's the gearbox back together. Now that can be refitted to the electronic park brake module and we can finish rebuilding. So take your gearbox and the pull, slide it through that center gear, like so. Line up the mounting points so that you can fix the gearbox back in place with the three screws. Like so. Should all fit in there nicely. Secure the gearbox back in place. Okay. Once those three screws are nipped up, you can then reconnect the circuit board just with the single blue connector, like that, and clip the spade connectors back onto the motor terminals. Now we can reconnect the cables. So take the quick release cable first, feed it in through the side of the park brake module, and you'll notice there's a small peg on this plastic disc that must slot in. Once you've got it in place, take that nut and loosely start it, because we still need a bit of room to maneuver this into place. So pick up the quick release end, and attach it to the end of the pool, it will just slide over. Once that's in place, just slide the plastic collar over the whole lot and that will keep it locked in position. So you'll see it's slid over the inner cable and the outer collar. Give it a push and it just clicks and that will now hold the cable onto the end and we can finish tightening this. So just finish tightening this and then we can move on to the other side. Again, this is a threaded cable. We need to thread this into the pool five turns and then don't forget it's a left-handed thread so you're essentially turning it anti-clockwise to tighten it up. So feed it in through the side of the module, get it started. And then turn that one, two, three, four, five turns. Once that's latched in, take the plastic collar, push it into the side of the park brake module, making sure the pin lines up like so, should sit flush, and then take this wheel and tighten it like that. Now we can put a bead of silicon around the edge of the module to stop any water getting in and refit the cover. So just use some normal, this is black silicon. Just put a thin bead around the edge just to keep any water out. difficult to get on there evenly because the edge is so thin but once it covers in place it'll all spread out and it'll seal up fine so just spread the silicon around a little bit if you need to to make sure all the edges of the module are covered once they've got a thin bead you can take the top cover again just offer it up into place make sure all the screw holes line up push it down and now we can use our new screws to fix that into place permanently. <laughs> so 
So when all the screws are tight, the module's ready to be refitted to the car. And the, replacing the gears is a really cost-effective way of fixing a really common problem on the Discovery 3. We've covered how to remove and refit the electronic park brake module in another video in the Brit Park Workshop series.